Plex, the app you run to run your private media server, just push out an update that will email your friends and family what you've been watching. This is one of the most tone deaf things I've seen a company do. And honestly, it is making it hard for me to keep using Plex. In the past, you have seen videos on Plex on this channel. And I'll be honest with you, I make videos of stuff I use. And I use Plex. I've enjoyed Plex. I've got a ton of DVDs throughout the years. And it's nice having a centralized media server to watch all of those and not have to carry them around. And honestly, I don't even have a DVD player anymore. And so I've made tutorials on it. However, with this most recent update, the company really is showing that it has changed from the privacy focused, hey, whatever's on your media server is on your media server. You do you. This is just a great interface for using it into trying to make additional money and grow users by, well, sending out spam and not just spam, but also, hey, this is what your friends are watching. And to make matters even worse, they did not make it clear what was happening. There was a single button that if you do not realize to click it when you're opening up your Plex app at one point, you have opted into this. And these are settings you need to check to make sure this is disabled. And so in this video, we're going to go over how to update your privacy settings, as well as what this issue was. And finally, at the end, I may be talking about switching over to something like Jellyfin, which is an open source competitor to Plex that does not have these issues because it is not trying to build a company and get more people in and thinking that sending out your private media watch list is something that people want. All right. So right here, this is one of the many examples of this occurring. Essentially about a week ago, there was a notice on your dashboard when you logged in Plex for the very first time that said, Hey, we've updated some privacy features. Hey, you've got this watch list. What do you want to do with it? And I remember seeing this notice and I clicked private. I tend to be that person. Anytime I see anything that I can opt out of, I opt out of it just from a reflex, honestly. But if anybody else in your house click that and just click, click through it, as a lot of people do, you were opted in to sending out email notifications of your watch list. And this is one of the many examples right here, this Reddit post Plex sent, I want your sex to all my friends and family members without my permission. They literally are using your friends list and your watch history to essentially send your friends spam and say, Hey, this is what this person's watching. You should sign up for Plex and get on there. And there are a ton of issues with this that I don't even know you need to go into Plex when it was originally built, especially if you look at old forum posts, the creators are like, yeah, we never going to keep a watch list. That's not what this is. Whatever is your media is your media. And now I see them trying to make more money and grow. They've got a massive user base, but a lot of them have already bought the Plex Pass lifetime or are just not going to. And so now they're trying to grow. And to do this, they are using you as marketers and saying, hey, this person's watching that and trying to grow like that, which is not a great place to be. And I think it is a very tone deaf thing that Plex did. So assuming you do not want your friends and family members, anybody you've shared your Plex library with, just seeing all the stuff you've been watching. We are going to go over how to opt out of this. I'm going to leave a link to this post as well as this lovely post right here that somebody put together that actually goes through how to disable all the different sharing options we've got here. They've got two sections, how to disable this discovery sharing. And that is the email notifications that friends and family members, anybody who you shared with will get. We're going to go over how to disable that. And they've also got how to disable playback data being sent to Plex. This is one that really bothers me because it was not opt in, it was opt out. And especially if you look at the old post by the creators of Plex, they were saying, we will never look at this information. We don't care about this. Whatever's on your home media server is on your home media server. We're only going to look at like debug metrics for breaking stuff. And now it has changed. So we're going to go in and we're going to follow these settings right here. We're basically just going to log into Plex, do this on a computer browser. And then we are going to go into our profile. So right here, mine's going to be blurred out because I don't want you to see this either. And you're going to see your watch list and other stuff right here. What we can do is we are going to go ahead and hit edit profile. And we are going to scroll down into a few different privacy settings down at the very bottom. And you're going to want to hit every single one of these to be as restrictive as possible. Watch history, private, watch list, private ratings, private, my friends, private and for account visibility, friends only is the most restrictive option. And after that, you should be not getting those emails sent out. As you can see, none of this 
made it look like your friends and family were going to get emails about what you've been watching. And I just think this was a really shady and tone deaf thing that Plex did. Now, for the cherry on top, we can also go into how to disable sending playback data to Plex, which is insanely hard to get to. We're gonna go ahead and click on this link right here, and you are going to think that you are on a forum post, but in reality, you are actually editing settings on your account. Right here, this is the settings we've got, and we're going to go ahead and scroll down, and you're going to disable send playback data to Plex. Right here, it absolutely looks like this is something that is just a simple info document, but in reality, this is where you edit your settings. Once again, making this very hard to see. Currently, they do say that they do not get the actual content that was played, but honestly, they are changing more and more. So hopefully disabling this is if they do update their privacy settings in the future to include that. Once again, right now, according to their privacy information, they are not collecting titles played. And we probably can trust this due to the fact that there would be a big old lawsuit if it was found that they were. But this hopefully would not get opted back in if they ever do choose to do that. I would generally just recommend disabling these things just because it's easier to disable all this analytics than to worry about what is in there. So once you uncheck that, there's no save button on this site at all. Once again, this looks just like a help article, but in reality, this is where you edit those settings. All right, and so now let's close out this video. Once you've done these things, this is currently the best way to disable as much privacy settings as possible within Plex. I also want to give a shout out to software called Jellyfin. And this is something that I've seen a lot of people deploying and I'm going to seriously look at deploying for myself because it is good old open source software that is essentially a Plex replacement. Obviously it's not like a clone or anything, but it is its own version and it is built to be in the exact same way. You've got movies, shows, music, and all the normal stuff you'd like, as well as books that Plex does not have. And so this is essentially the open source version of it where you can literally come in here and start contributing to the software. If you want something on there, you can start adding it in there yourself. Love open source projects for that. And I'm going to give these guys a shout out. And honestly, I, you will probably be seeing a Jellyfin tutorial in a little bit here because what Plex has done here has not made me a happy customer. And whenever you're working with open source projects like this, you just don't have to worry about these things coming back because fundamentally, it's not a company trying to make money. Now to play devil's advocate here, the downside of not having a company like Plex building this thing, instead of relying on open source developers is, mobile apps and stuff are not going to be as developed. I hate to say that, but if you look at the different media players here, you will find that Infuse is the only Apple TV built in one. And so it's one of those things that, depending on what you're using, you might not have as many options as and as seamless of an experience. But once again, this is one of those projects where the more people who join in, the more people who sponsor it, the more people who contribute to it, both either through code or financially, the more of this stuff will be built out. And so it's really community driven and that is one of the best parts about it. You don't end up with these massive companies who are just trying to grow, controlling your media. All right, well, that's gonna be it for this video. I will leave a link on that Reddit post for how to opt out of all these features, as well as to Jellyfin site. Definitely give them a check out. If you have any other questions, leave those down in the comments below and what videos you'd like to be making in the future. All right, have a good one. Bye.